Hey everyone. So for this week's menu, I'm going to be starting out. It's going to be two components for this menu. I'm going to have a keto-friendly stuffed cabbage. So the main substitute for that will be removing the uncooked rice that usually goes into the stuffing part of the stuffed cabbage and subbing in a uh, par-cooked cauliflower rice. And then I will be making a side of cauliflower mac and cheese, which I'm doing today, because I still need to let my ground meats thaw out for the stuffed cabbage, so I'll be doing that a day or two from now. So, the first set of ingredients I have for stuffed cabbage, I have three packs of cauliflower rice, one of these will be, set us, will be, it's all going to get sauteed tonight, one will be set aside for the stuffed cabbage mix. Got some parsley, garnish, and being folded in mac and cheese. I'm going to cut about half of these garlic cloves tonight. The other half will go into the stuffed cabbage. Seasonings are salt, pepper, red pepper flake, and paprika. Those are just my preferences. My thickening agents will be two things really. I got two half packages of cream cheese. I'll just have to see how it's going to see how much I actually need. And then I'll have some heavy cream as my liquid. That's in the fridge at the moment. And then the magical properties of American cheese has really good thickening agent abilities. I'm not entirely sure what's an American cheese. That it gives it its consistency where it's difficult to melt and brown up like other cheeses, but it acts as a really good thickener. Like most good home style mac and cheeses will have at least a couple slices of American cheese thrown in there. And then my cheeses of choice for this mac and cheese, sharp cheddar of course, and an Italian blend, so mozzarella, provolone, romano, parmesan, patina, and asiago. I sliced up some smoked gouda, set some aside for a cheese plate later on, and some is going to go into this, and then some feta, or a little bit of twang. But first thing is first, I'm going to go ahead and get some of my garlic cut up. I want to save these other cloves for cutting up the day of the stuffed cabbage for the filling in the sauce. So as I've done in other videos, smash the garlic cloves so they're all relatively flat and level. And eventually I might exclude some components of the videos if I've done them repeatedly, that way people's times are wasted watching these. Cut in one direction. So it's little strips. You can cut in the opposite direction. You don't need the super fine mints because, like I mentioned before, really small chopped garlic burns quick. And before you can get your garlic caramelized and release more of its flavor, half of it is burnt. And then you're sad. At least I'm sad. Alright. That is that. I'm going to set this aside in here. And flip my board. I'm going to rinse off this knife because I was slicing my cheese with this. And I got to chop up some parsley quickly. 
and I don't necessarily want to impart cheese residue into my parsley. So I'll be back in a moment. I'll pause. I'm back. I have my rinsed off parsley here. Clump it as best together as you can. Cut across the other way. Keep pulling it back in towards the center. And repeat until your desired chopness. Really, I'm just trying to get it so there's no big parts of stems anywhere. That can be somewhat disruptive to your meal. And this is all the cut work there's going to be for this recipe because I like to cheat and buy the pre-diced cauliflower. If you're curious about bringing down a whole head of cauliflower, it's fairly easy. It's just a little messy and the price point's not too far off. A whole head of cauliflower is typically about $3 and you'll get almost a pound of diced cauliflower. Whereas in the store in Kroger lately, the diced cauliflower can be anywhere from $2.50 on sale to $4. But dicing up uh, my own cauliflower would be about oh, five to 10 minutes of labor, depending on how much cauliflower I need. And then a fair amount of mess on my table at the end. The end. So this is acceptable. Eventually in my videos I'll uh, put up the average prices of what I'm spending so you can see how expensive this meal production is. Because there are a lot of things I'm showing you are like home meals for the last at least five days out of the week. That's about good for me. Get this in the bowl. It's a little full right now, but I'm gonna uh, get some of that into the mix. And then I'm going to go ahead and get me two dabs of butter. I'll fix that later. And get that going in my big, in my big stock pot. You can hear that butter sizzle. I'm gonna let all that butter get melted. I'm gonna spray in with a little bit of pan spray. sound like all the butter is melted. The important part for sauteing, I've probably mentioned this before, I will repeat things uh, occasionally to reiterate the importance, is always get your sauteed items, whether it's vegetables, your steak that you're gonna sear off, into a hot, well-seasoned or well-oiled pan. Case like this, you see all the butter is not bubbled, is all nice and bubbled up and screaming at me a little bit. It's ready to accept some goodies.
And remember, I am sauteing all of this now. I'm gonna pull a third of this for uh, my uh, stuffed cabbage in a couple of days. And I'm aiming to just get that soft enough where it won't be a hard chew. But I don't need to get it fully cooked because the stuffed cabbage is going to get baked on its own for a little bit. Season this with salt, pepper, paprika, and some red pepper flake. And I'm going to let this cook down to at least by one third, and then I'm going to pull some of it. this too much because there's a fair number of salty cheeses that will be going into this mix. And you can always add salt later on. It's much harder to take it back. The only way you can fix it is typically to add more of a neutral liquid and then that reduces your flavor. I'm going to pause for a second while this um, redu uh, reduces in volume and then I'll show you what it looks like before I start moving on to other procedures. And so it's come down about 30 volume. The coloration is from the seasoning mainly, the salt, pepper, paprika, and um, red pepper flake. I'm going to go ahead and pull a third of this, put my stuffed cabbage for later. Spread that back out. I'm actually going to create a little hole in the center. And saute this garlic. A cup to two cups of heavy cream. And then I'm going to start folding in my cream cheese. Get that to that consistency and start adding my other cheeses and build this mac and cheese. This hole I just made, you kind of do a uh, similar process to uh, fried rice. After you cooked and seasoned up your rice, you uh, put a hole in the center of it, drop in your egg, let your egg get fully cooked, and then scramble that into your rice, as opposed to putting raw egg into your rice and then scrambling it. I'll probably have a fried rice recipe coming up here within a week or two. I haven't done any Chinese recipes in a little bit. I do have a keto lettuce wrap I like to make. Okay. Mix that back in all together. I 
I have a little bit of bite to my crock bottle rice though because I don't want to be completely mushed by the time the mac and cheese is done. And then if I feel like this is ever, that's probably close to two cups of heavy cream in there. If I ever feel like it's too thin or too thick after I've added all the cheese, you can always add water to thin it out. I was thinking of adding chicken stock, which would be more flavorful, but you don't necessarily want chicken flavor in your mac and cheese. Not saying it would be bad, but then we're kind of approaching a risotto territory or like a, a fancier pasta sauce. So, it's gonna look pretty liquidy for a little bit. It'll come to a boil quickly. And then I'm gonna add in a whole log of mac and cheese, a whole a log of cream cheese, and a slice or two of Velveeta. And then I will start adding in my other cheeses for flavor. I will make sure that shot of this, my hands and cover up. Okay, there we go. Let it come to a boil before adding cheese. All right, my look is at a boil. I'm gonna fold in some mac and cheese or some uh, cream cheese. I'm going to be, I have like, ultimately like six different cheeses going into this. So I'm going to be saying cheeses a lot and probably mixing up the name of which cheese you get that in. Two pounds of cauliflower rice in here. I'll probably add in at least three slices of uh, Velveeta. Now the reason I'm making the sauce based on uh, cream cheese and Velveeta being the thickening agents is because for keto, you want to try and avoid roux or flour. I mean, it won't be a huge amount of calories added. Right now, this dish is mainly just uh, fiber and fat because of the cheese and vegetable content. But uh, you want to try and avoid using conventional flour when possible. And uh, I, I have tried making a couple things with almond flour for a roux. Oh, uh, that was a fun time. It wasn't. And the whole, I'll try and I'll try and make it happen one day before I make a video for it. My own home experimentations. But yes, this is uh, two cups of heavy cream, two pounds of cauliflower rice seasoned, so uh, three or four cloves of garlic, and then. A half pound of cream cheese and three slices of Velveeta. And as you can tell, the sauce is a little thin, but it's already thickened up significantly from when it was just heavy cream in there. And that's fine, because we're going to be adding a lot more cheeses to it. First, I'm going to get all these slices of good in here, because they're going to take a little bit of time to break it down. Shredded cheese I have. I'm gonna get all this leftover pack of cheddar in here. So right now that's about four ounces of cheddar going in. So you want to get feta in there relatively early on. I'm going to add 
about an ounce at the moment because feta has a fairly high melting temperature. So it takes a little while for it to get fully melted. This top layer of parsley in here. And it's actually almost at a very good consistency right now. I'll show you in a second. In fact, I'm going to reduce this heat. Oh, big parsley leaf. Myself and my girlfriend. Let's see if we want to go in either direction. It's rarely ever perfect in the first go. Hmm. I like it. Um, yeah. So I'll be back in a second with a second opinion, and I'll get into a baking dish. Hello. Final opinions are in. Um, yeah, it was actually almost spot on. I just added a little bit of a accent to it. So now, oh, oh woe is me. Greased baking dish. Oven is going at 400 degrees because the mixture is already hot. I'm just trying to get the cheese browned when it all comes together. I think this baking dish here will be just perfect. Get it as level as possible. And for your knowledge, cauliflower risotto, which is another start or starch substitute recipe I like to make, is almost the same process. Just a uh, less few cheeses. You're in utilization of chicken stock. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this with a layer of some. White. So yellow. And you can also do you are making your own home mac and cheese. You can easily use this method I just did for your own noodle based pasta. Just keep in mind, you might want to reserve a little bit of pasta water because I get added moisture from my sauteed veggie mix. Whereas noodles, if they're drained well, don't provide that much moisture to your sauce. You might want to reserve some pasta water as a thickening agent. And then a couple of crumbles of feta, because we like feta in this household. Breaking them up small so they can actually brown up and caramelize instead of just sit there and stay cold. And then this is going to go in the oven for 400 degrees for probably like 
20 minutes or so, however long it takes me to shower and eat a little bowl of mac and cheese. And I'll be back for the final product. Hello, I'm back. Um, this is the final product. I might have slightly overfilled the dish. dish. Other than that, this is looking pretty picture perfect. So that was about 20 minutes in the oven at 400. The only thing I would have changed was either filled this dish less or put it in a bigger dish and have it in the thinner layer. And you wouldn't have the leakage off to the side. But yeah, that is my cauliflower mac and cheese with two pounds of cauliflower, a quarter pound of smoked gouda, an ounce of feta, five ounces of cheddar, half pound of cream cheese, four slices of American, two cups of heavy cream, uh, four ounces of an Italian blend, and about a tablespoon of garlic, some parsley, and yeah, and salt and pepper. All right. All right, y'all. I'm going to this up, and I will be following up with y'all for, I'm sorry, I'll follow up with y'all with for the the stuffed uh, cabbage recipe. All right. Until then.